If you ever go out to conferences, you'll find that most of what comes out of those conferences are stories told by those up on stage. They're not out there talking about empirical information, numbers, and that type of thing, but they're telling a story about their, their experience, their program, their project, and it's very important and you walk away feeling good about it. But we just don't do enough of that. And I, I think that the agency would benefit greatly if we taught people more how to tell stories so that they can bring together all the nuances and, and really show how well we're doing as an agency. And So when I was a kid, growing up in Washington, D.C., I had one dream. I wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to help people. So you can imagine how I felt when I got that rejection letter from the very last medical school that I applied to, Crestfallen. And I remember it was 1971. I was sitting at the kitchen table, my mom was reading the newspaper, and she came over to me and she said, she pointed to an article and she said, here's an article in here about this brand new fledgling agency called the Environmental Protection Agency, and its mission is to take care of human beings and, and, and the environment, human health. Maybe you should look into this. You know, you want to help people. If you joined EPA, you would be able to help people, but the big difference is, if you were a doctor, you'd have about 100 patients. If you go work for EPA, you would have one patient that is very, very big, and it matters to everybody. So shortly thereafter, I joined EPA. I've been here 44 years, and I'm still standing. <laughs> okay. um, between then and now, I got married. I raised with my wife seven children. We're raising two more grandchildren. I did say seven children, <laughs> so you can groan with me if you'd like. Uh, and it was always sort of interesting around the dinner table at the Murray household because everybody around the table had their own stories to tell. Everybody had their own woes and their own problems. My daughter, Rebecca, who was good friends with Julie yesterday, now Julie's good friends with Stephanie. Her world's falling apart. And my son, you know, thinks that the world is terribly unfair because nobody's giving him the money he needed for a video game. And then Nolan, well, we never quite figured out what Nolan was thinking in any given time. but. But my wife and I were always trying to come up with creative ideas, innovative ideas, to take all of this individual talking and turn it into sort of more of a, a communal communication. It was great fun. But it was that experience that actually translated into an experience at EPA that I really wanted to share with you uh, today. About four years ago, I was sitting around another table but this table had individuals from several different federal agencies. We had all come together to talk about sustainability and American manufacturing. So as the meeting progressed, each agency individually talked about their individual programs and their individual budget woes and their individual issues and problems. And we were about halfway through and I thought, I'm back at my dining room table. <laughs> the only difference is there's no melodrama here. Uh, maybe a little, but no melodrama. <laughs> and when it came around to my turn, I talked about the wonderful programs that we have here at EPA, especially pollution prevention programs, which is what I was working on and am working on. And then I offered an, a suggestion, an observation. I said, as we walked around the table and everybody talked about their individual programs, they were all very, very good and they were very, very positive and you were getting great things done in touching the manufacturers. But none of us talked about how we could unify all that and bring it all together. Wouldn't it be better for American manufacturers and American communities to be able to do that, bring it all together for them? So that day is when we invented this thing called E3, which stands for Economy, Energy, and the Environment. 
It's a framework, it's not prescriptive, and in short what it does is it provides to American communities the wherewithal to organize themselves around the issues that are most important to them. And then we take all of our resources from these various federal agencies, all related, and we unify them and we provide technical assistance to those communities to help them help themselves meet their sustainability goals. It's that simple. And the communities are loving it, they're using it, they're, sh they're sharing with us a lot of experiences right now. And I love it because it's been one of the more innovative things I've ever been associated with in my tenure here at EPA. So let me just end with another observation. When I joined the agency in 1971, we were facing some pretty nasty uh, domestic issues environmentally. We had rivers catching fire, we had fish kills occurring all over the United States, we had Love Canal, we had Times Beach, and the agency attacked all of these problems and over the years we solved those problems. But our job is far from over because the environmental problems that we're looking at today are no less egregious than what we had in 1971 but the big difference is they're global more than domestic so like E3 if we're going to solve these problems we all have to work together not only within the agency but across federal agencies because we only have one patient and that patient matters to all of us thank you I think when I brought up my family situation and, and some of the past history, I saw a lot of nodding heads so that obviously a lot of them have children. They know what it's like to sit around the dining room table with their kids. So I think that did relate. Really